The next thing I want to go through is how you can promote yourself um, better and get basically more clients, more credibility, um, and more business coming your way. Now, this is not going to be one of those, hey, how to get rich on the internet, how to make, how to get your six-figure clients and all the rest of it. We've got to be realistic. That stuff is just utter tripe. And there is no excuse for that within the Association for INT Practitioners. If you've been suckered into these online programs where they're basically telling you how you can get your six-figure clients and all the rest of it. Basically, get a refund. Forget it. There might well be a few tips in there that are useful from a technical point of view. Um, it simply doesn't work. If those people are getting those six-figure clients, why are they wasting their time selling an online course? Just start there. I also have to tell you that some of those people have come to me as clients in the past. I can't tell you who as much as I would love to because it sickens me when I see how they continue to behave later on. So this is about a sensible, rational, and systematic way of building a better business and getting more work as an IEMT practitioner. You need to know the IEMT brand, so Integral Eye Movement Therapy, is, is a very strong brand and it continues to grow in strength. This has been around now for a good 10 years or so. And I have been very, very careful how I have marketed it myself, how the courses have been structured, and how essentially other people who are training in this have also been marketing. The most important thing is we keep the claims low. One of the problems with therapeutic branding is you'll see this with the other disciplines, um, if we can call them disciplines. So we have things like, say, the tapping, tapping technologies, I should have thought of that. Tapping technologies, where essentially it starts out that if you tap on your face, you can feel better and it can help with problematic emotions and memories. No denying, for some people that works very nicely. Then, as that became very popular, because it's very, very simple, the simpler a therapeutic model is, the more likely it is to become sort of a household name. Make things a little bit more complicated. Oh, my God. Well, that requires effort, doesn't it? So people aren't going to be interested. So very quickly, we saw masses, masses of people jumping into the tapping bandwagon. And then you had all the, it starts off with TFT, then it becomes EFT, and then all the other offshoots. It starts off helping with emotions and memory, and then very quickly it cures 97.7% of all problems, and then we start seeing the extremes, like it cures cancer, it cures malaria. I mean, seriously, there was a group of people who were TFT practitioners who set up a contingency to go into Africa to cure tribal people of malaria by tapping their faces. I'm not kidding you. I'm going to put the link on this page so you can have a look. So we, we start to see those kind of things. And we also saw people going off into Mexico as well, again, into impoverished regions to sell their wares so they can then get virtue signal points on social media. Hey, look at us. We're helping the poor by tapping their faces. And then we start to see other things like surrogate tapping and psychic tapping. I'm kidding you not. Um, and then how everyone can cure every illness known to man. And all you've got to do is tap. Didn't last long though, did it? Um, it was a flash in the pan. Not many people are doing it now as people quickly basically discover they don't get the clients. Because the only clients they're getting are other people that want to believe is true. And it starts to disappear very quickly. We'll see this with all sorts of therapeutic fads over the years. Now, by keeping the claims low, artificially low, I know how good this work is, um, as hopefully you do too. I know it's good. But if everyone starts competing against everyone else, oh, this is incredibly effective. I work with X, Y, and Z problems. And that we see a competition in the marketplace between practitioners trying to outdo each other, as they do in all the other disciplines too then we're going to destroy the brand very quickly. So hence why we enforce keeping it low level. And the other sort of nonsense that people say, things like I'm fully qualified, I'm fully accredited, I'm fully insured, everyone's fully something, approved by blah, 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 blah. Now those things are all well and good when they're legitimate. But when I'm an internationally accredited and fully approved practitioner, I fully, I'm fully insured and a member of this body and this body and this body, 
You need to kind of think how that looks to the viewing public. Does a dentist tell you this? Does a doctor tell you this? No, they don't. They might well use a title. They might well have a certificate of practice, whatever, up in their office. But that's not how they're necessarily going to be marketing themselves. The way I look at this kind of marketing is the guy in the pub trying to impress the girl. And ladies, I'm sorry if guys have <laughs> attempted to pick you up in this manner, where they come along and try to impress you with their car, their clothes, who they know, their, the, the braggart. Do not be a therapeutic braggart. It's the worst thing you can be. You need to go slowly and steadily to build, build your practice. Now, have a look. Just have a little look at this page here. So this is the practitioner listing page. Now, you need to know that we have ongoing and perpetual advertising of this page into all sorts of areas. Um, at the moment, I'm marketing this page specifically to nurses and doctors, hospital-based. Um, and those trainers who are active at the moment may well have noticed there's been a, an increased uptake in interest from medical people. And that's because we're actively promoting this page. Now, the reason being is that both to help bring in properly qualified individuals um, we, and also to help spread the word of what our IEMT is, the best people to let this let know about this is medical or registered practitioners, both nursing and medical. Um, as time goes on, I'll start to shift as well the marketing into other professional areas. This is the page they see. Look at your profile. This is how it looks at the point of first contact. And if you haven't even spelt your name correctly, you haven't used proper capitalization or punctuation, you haven't put a brand image or logo or some kind of picture of you, you haven't put your location, that's the impression you're giving people, both customer, potential clients, and fellow professionals who could potentially send you people. So it doesn't matter how many times I have asked these people to correct, I'm not going to name anybody here, you can see for yourselves, let's shame them. You can see for yourself who these people are. They've never filled in their profile. They can't, some of them, <laughs> some people have got an upside down picture. I write to them. I've got a colleague at the moment who's gone through and written to every single one of you who hasn't completed your profile. And still, you haven't done it. And I find it fascinating because I know there's a direct relationship between a people's ability to spell their own name in a public domain and people's ability to receive work that comes their way. So correct your profile, correct your images. Have a look at this from a customer perspective, from a colleague perspective. How does this look? Then have a look at your profiles. You'll notice on your profiles, you can actually put in HTML, which means you can format your profile so you can correct all the gaps. You can format it how you like. You can insert images. You can insert video, and that's why I made the video earlier. Imagine if everyone on here had a welcome video. Um, these are the things that make a difference. You may not think so because it may seem disproportionate that the amount of work you have to do correcting your profile will probably take you 10 minutes. A video, a bit of practice, won't take you very long at all. Um, you can start to put images in there. Make images that actually are distinctly different from everybody else's. Make, make yourself stand out. This is the kind of stuff that starts to make a difference. Now, imagine you also do the other thing, which I ask everybody to do, and yet I think about four people have managed it so far. That's out of 430 members. Put a link in your social media. So on Facebook, for example, you can have your website links and all the rest of it. Put a link there to your profile. Now, just picture this. We've got 430-odd members, and if everybody had a one-way link coming off their social media profiles to this page... I wonder what would happen to the Google indexing of this page. It would be pretty phenomenal, right? You'd start to get rising up the listings. Now, within the page, of course, you can have a link back to your main website. Now, that helps, of course, with the Google search and the indexing of your website. Because when you have contextual links going to a contextual website, that is good. When you have spammy links going to a non-related website, that is very, very bad. So imagine if everyone here has got links coming out of Integral Line Movement Therapy, linking to their website whereby they offer their services, and all of their social media 
linked to this particular their particular profile page, the results will be very, very impressive. Now, if that particular page is also very interesting because you guys have filled it with interesting pictures and videos, we now have increased retention of people looking through this stuff. They want to know what this IAMT is. You have to remember, the majority of people on the planet, um, probably everyone except about 5,000 people on the planet, no one has heard of this. There's only a small number of people that know about this. We can start to change that. It just requires a little bit of effort from everyone to do this. Now, there's other stuff. So, um, lots of people wrote to me to say, okay, why can't we have a private closed forum to discuss cl uh, client stuff, IMT stuff? So, I spent quite a bit of money having a forum built and put onto the website. I told everyone it was there. It was there for two years. No one used it. Everyone is fixated on Facebook. Um, people still rely on asking public questions on Facebook. Now, have a think about how that looks. You have a potential client comes to you. I can guarantee you they're checking you out. I guarantee they are going to be looking at your Facebook page. Hello, I've got a client coming next week who's got this particular condition. Um, will IMT help this? Bingo, you've just lost the client. I've just gained one. Um, so you've got to look at everything from a client perspective. So you want to, I've, I've removed the forum now. The forum is now gone from the website. Um, it was too big and bulky, so it slowed the site down. Now I thought that would be a, 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 a small price to pay if everyone actually used the forum. No one used the forum, so it was a big cost in terms of slowing the site down. So that's now been removed. I've also created a Reddit page, and the Reddit link has been displayed on the website for uh, quite a few years, actually. And again, only about four or five people have ever done this. Now, Reddit, reddit.com, most of you may have never actually looked at it, is the biggest traffic website on the planet. Everyone thinks of Facebook. No, no, no. Reddit is the one you want to look at. Um, and basically, Reddit is a collection of sub-forums or subreddits um, that people can discuss all sorts of interesting things. Reddit pages get indexed in Google. Um, and if you do a search on integral line movement therapy, um, have a look. Um, you will find some Reddit links are ranking higher than you are. Why? Because I use Reddit. I even created an integral line movement therapy Reddit subreddit so you people could put your links on there. Your website might index low, but Reddit doesn't. So here's what you do. You post a link to any of your pages onto Reddit. Do that once a week until all of your pages have been posted. Don't do them all at once. You've got to understand how these things work. So you don't just post the link to your homepage, the, you know, say, andrewtiosin.com. You can do that, but also do what they call deep linking. So all the other pages on your website, get the URL, post that into Reddit too. Give it a meaningful title. What you're going to start to find is that you're going to increase the likelihood of getting onto the first page or two of Google. You want to get on page one. Your website might not make it, but a Reddit post might. In fact, I'm going to put it to you like this. Unless you understand SEO, a Reddit post is much more likely to get there than your website will. Again, think about this. 430 so members. Imagine if everyone was doing this. Using the Reddit IEMT form to post the links. That's what it's there for. That would be a bit different to how it is now. That would be significant. Now, there's other things you can be doing too. Posting regularly onto the forums. We've got Integral Eye Movement Therapy Practitioners Forum. Actually, there's now probably about a dozen IEMT forums. Just so you know, I'm now only on the association pages that I run and the practitioner page. I don't participate on any of the others, simply because it was like trying to play whack-a-mole with the weirdos. People start arguing with each other, they start falling out with each other, and everyone wants me to come and have a look. I've got better things to do than police Facebook, because practitioners and trainers and all these other people start falling out with each other and having squabbles. I don't care. The public does, though, and your clients do. Be aware, you might well have an argument with somebody online and you have full force of righteousness on your side. All the viewing public sees 
is drama. That's all they're going to see, and people will love it. Those who are familiar with my social media know will be will know how I utilize this for my advantage. Um, you'll very, very rarely see me write anything negative or defend myself ever when people go on the attack about something I've done, said, or just being trolling in varying ways. I simply won't. Um, engage. Why? Because I've got nothing to prove to that individual. So what if I win an argument online? So what? I, I, it doesn't matter. We're not in the playground at school. Most of these people you've never met and are never going to meet. What I'm aware of is what does the audience see? The viewing audience, the people who spend all their day on Facebook. They're getting a good flavor of the kind of person that you are. And if you're being small-minded, picky, argumentative, aggressive, um, defensive, they only have to see that once. People only need to see you being defensive or argumentative once online, and that is now how they measure you. So I'm highly attuned to how people view me on social media. So I tend to put out an image that I want to, people to see rather than the truth. If I argue with people, I tend to very rarely change my mind on something. I tend to be persistent to the point and never deliver an insult or anything unless it's funny. That's one of my golden rules. And never, ever defend yourself from an allegation, an accusation, a rumor, or anything else. Some of you will be aware I have one or two people at the moment who are highly prolific on their rumor mongering and negative comments about me online. Um, these are people who I have very clearly caused a bit of upset to um, in real life. I have never, ever once engaged with them publicly, replied to them, and I will never defend against an allegation. Why? Again, it's like a ridiculous game of whack-a-mole, accusation, accusations, accusations. And all I end up with is creating a drama that draws in viewing people. Somebody wants to accuse me online, they can accuse me today, I don't reply, not a lot else happens. Tomorrow is gone. Next week, no one's even going to remember who that person was. And they might persistently do that, but they never get any engagement from me, and they quickly disappear. If I engage and I start defending myself, and now we get into it with each other and have a public falling out, now we've got drama, and everyone loves a good drama. Um, it's more interesting than a soap opera or EastEnders, that kind of thing, because it's real. It's real life. Now they become the stories other people are telling um, and now your conduct in that is the story that people who have got nothing to do with you or the other person, that's the story they then tell. Some of you will be aware of some of the manufactured dramas that I've done in the past. Um, they, these were done by design with other people in order to grab attention. There was a point where I thought I was a quite a competent therapist, but nobody knew who I was. I had no internet presence. I had no, um, no audience base. The way that I manipulated that was to create some artificial dramas. Um, some of you will have seen the naked video that I put up. That was the one that did it for me. That was the one that moved me from total obscurity to being a person who everyone was paying attention to. I stuck a video of myself naked online. If you were one of the 400 people, only 400 people ever saw it. As soon as it hit 400, I removed it. And now rumors did the rest. Everyone's looking at my stuff. And what do they find? Authoritative, well-written, well-thought-out articles on neuroscience, neurology, NLP, hypnosis, and a lot of videos on the neurological stuff I was doing at the time. They come in expecting one thing and find something far better. I don't do that kind of thing now, but that's what I did back then in order to effectively launch my career as self-employed therapist and trainer. So you've got to pay attention to what it is the audience sees. What most people are doing when it comes to any form of marketing, they're only paying attention to how they feel about what it is they could be doing. And because these things are unnatural behaviors, these are not behaviors you would normally just do routinely as part of life. You have to plan it out, think about it, push yourself to do the thing that actually feels quite uncomfortable. Do things like what I've done here in setting up this room to do the film. This took an hour and a half to set up. I forgot my SD cards. So I had to go back and back home again through the rain and go and get those and come back again through the traffic. It's been a struggle this morning. It hasn't been the easiest morning I've ever had. You've got to actually really think about 
the audience, not the effort you have to make getting through those difficult emotions to get it done. Um, and whatever you do, the moment you do start marketing yourself and, and raising your head above the parapet, expect the pot shots, expect the weirdos, expect the stalkers. You're going to get those. They are everywhere, especially online. Most of them you will never meet, fortunately. And just be aware that these are actually quite unnatural behaviors. So it's not going to feel comfortable. With repetition, it starts to become comfortable. Please don't get caught in the focus on how it feels to do these things. This is not how I would like to spend my Sunday. Although the weather is so bad out there, um, it actually doesn't make any difference to my weekend because what else am I able to do outdoors? So this is not, natural, not going to be natural to you to do, this, to do these behaviors. With familiarity, sorry, with familiarity, it gets easier over time. But you have to also do it persistently, and you have to make an effort. My observation of the average therapist, and I please don't take this the wrong way as a negative insult about any particular individual. <laughs> or actually, maybe you should. <laughs> Who cares? Actually, don't worry about it. Um, most therapists want to get paid lots of money and have very high status and be thought of incredibly well by everybody for talking. Let's face it, as a therapist or coach, that's all you're doing is talking. In fact, talking in such a way it's possible to screw it up so you feel like you have to be fully insured. Talking. Now, how can I translate that? I'm going to translate that very easily. Most therapists are fundamentally lazy and are seeking to avoid the pain of work. Say that again. Most therapists are fundamentally lazy and are seeking to avoid the pain of work. I totally get that. That's why I do it. Now, I work insane hours and actually I have to make a lot of effort and I haven't really avoided the pain of work. However, when I compare it to what I used to do as a nurse, I compare it to what a colleague of mine does working with the homeless, um, street level drug addicts, homeless. Um, I used to live next door to a guy who worked for the council as one of the bin men. Um, I've known people who work in construction on the roads and in construction and building sites. That's hard work. This isn't hard work. This just takes hours to do. It's just lengthy work. There's a difference between hard work, that's the back-breaking graft, and extended hours of effort. A big difference to me. Most people don't make any effort. They, they have the same mindsets that they had when they started out and they stuck an advert in the local newspaper. They put one advert into the paper, cost them a lot of money, and then they hoped when that newspaper came out that week, because it's the local paper once a week, the phone won't stop ringing. And they wait, and they, 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 they go and buy the paper on Thursday, and they avidly look for their advert, and there it is, there's the advert. And they, re and they show all their friends, I've got an advert, there's the family, there's my advert. The phone doesn't ring. Nobody calls. And they think, shit, that didn't work. Then they pay a website, pay someone to make a website for them. The website goes live, and again, they tell all their friends, they stick it on Facebook, they tell everyone, oh, I've got a website. No one calls. Because each one individual thing doesn't do anything. You've got to keep making an effort. As I said before, 90% of my time is spent doing the stuff that earns me the money, and only 10% of my time is actually spent earning money. Um, and I think people massively underestimate the amount of effort it's going to take them to actually promote and all the rest of it. Now, all I'm asking you guys to do is put links on the Reddit page once a week so you, until you've covered your entire website. That would be easy, right? Why haven't you done it? I've asked you to complete your profiles. Most of you have managed to do it. There's still, as you've seen before, a significant number of you who simply can't even get your name right. That will take you 10 minutes to do. If you can't do the simple fundamental things, then I've got a question. Are you actually somebody who ought to be seeing clients? Because some of you need to do just such simple little tasks, and yet you're unable to do it, no matter how much I ask you to do so, how much my colleague has asked you to do so. Other things you can do. Write me a blog. If you have any idea how many people actually read the blog on the IMT website, loads. And an awful lot of those people are people looking for therapies. And a lot of them are medical practitioners, doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists. I know that because they write to me because I'm the web owner, the website owner.
Now, we have asked, myself and Sonia Richards, who's the chair of the association, have asked repeatedly, send us blog posts, write us an article, send us anything. Have a look. Have a look what's on there. And you're going to have a look at, so you can see Gavin's articles he sent over recently. Absolutely fantastic work he's doing. Have a look. Now, why does Gavin get all the work? Why do people know Gavin? He writes the blog posts. He promotes himself. He has an interesting Facebook page. He has an interesting website. He's producing new stuff. He's creative. Some of you haven't even spelled your name right. So it's only simple stuff, and it's stuff that you can do on an ongoing basis. You don't have to write a long blog post. Gavin writes lengthy stuff because he's really into all that stuff. They want 200 words. That's half a screen of text. That's all we need. And send me a picture too. Send me a feel good story. Even if it's just a quick thing. Hey, this person came, they reported this problem. We did three sessions. We did this, this, and this. And the client says, that's absolutely amazing. Little testimonial. It's not complicated, is it? Other things you want to look at. Have a look at this. So type my name into Google, Andrew T. Austin. Have a look on the right-hand side of the screen. What have we got here? Oh, my Google business listing. Now, this is significant because I don't have to worry about getting um, local traffic um, and local pages indexed into Google because Google does this on geographical distribution. So some of you, if you're outside of the UK, if you type my name, you're not going to see this particular thing because Google will send only local orientated um, business pages. However, have a look at what I've got here. So I can offer products. I can have a profile of myself. I can put pictures up. We have this posts thing. Every two weeks, those posts auto-delete. They expire. And I get a notification three days before that. So I line up my next post uh, where I can stick in a video. I, look, I can put an offer in there. I can advertise a course. I can advertise a whole load of stuff. And that takes up nearly half the screen. Why haven't you got one of those? Now, it takes a bit of effort. It takes, you've got to learn how this works. You put the links to your website in there, your links to your social media. This is phenomenal in what this can do. You haven't done it. Why? Because you weren't proactive to think about it. What else can I do? You were waiting. You were hoping. You were waiting for something to happen rather than go looking to make stuff happen. Start on your business, business Google page. It doesn't happen overnight. You've got to get your address proven. You've got to get registered. It takes a bit of effort. I don't know how to do that, Andy. Google it. Just type in Google business page. All the instructions are there. You've got to read through it. You've got to study it. It takes a bit of time. It takes a bit of effort. But hey, look at me. There I am. I'm not on the front page of Google. I take up half the front page of Google. That's quite significant. Do the same thing with Bing. Now, people don't realize this. Bing is the alternative Google. Uh, Bing is the one that no one uses. Oh, dear. Yes, they do. And they use it. A significant number of people use it. So a lot of people that don't like Google's interface, oddly enough. Now, obviously, the traffic on Bing is a lot less than there is on Google. And a lot of people that never, ever consider to use Bing. Well, that makes life really easy. Get yourself a Bing listing. Make sure your websites are indexed in Bing too. So submit your sitemaps. Oh, here's the other thing. If you're using Google AdWords and not getting a lot of results, did you know adverts on Bing cost about a third of those on Facebook and on Google? And of course, you only pay when people click. So you're not going like, to get less traffic. You're going to get two-thirds more traffic by advertising on Bing. Now, obviously, as more people use Bing, the prices are going to change. But I think we're probably good for another year or two. And for those starting out, this is a good place to look. So it's Bing Advertising, although now it's probably called the Microsoft Advertising Network or something. But if you go to bing.com and just type in Bing Advertising, it, you can set up yourself an advert where you only pay per click in probably about five minutes. Here's the thing I do. I pay a maximum of five pence a click. Some, some keywords obviously more like five pound a click. That's not worth it, it's not worthwhile. But if I got a background advertising at five pence a click, because it works on a bidding process, um, there will be lots of times when all the bids have been used up. So people's revenue, they've, they've used, they've, the amount of money you spend is capped. 
And so an awful lot of the time, I will get significant keyword coverage for five pence. I've sometimes set it to a penny per click, and I will get 1,000, 2,000 clicks a month just from that alone. That doesn't cost me very much money at all um, to actually get good traffic and people who are looking to access my services. There's some very, very good YouTube channels which will teach you how to do these things. I'm going to put those links on this page as well. It's stuff you have to study. It's stuff you have to do. It's stuff that you have to do repeatedly, persistently, and on an ongoing basis. It's not a case of stick the advert in the newspaper and sit back and wait for things to happen. Stop waiting for things to happen. There's 430 members or thereabouts of the association. Imagine if everybody just increased their effort threshold by about 10%. Think what would happen collectively. You can do this. And if you all start helping me out here, I'm not going to be the only one. Well, I'm actually, that's not fair. There's five of us, maybe six of us. We won't be the only ones who are making all the effort that you lot are hoping is going to trickle down to you. Join us, start doing a lot, lot more than you're doing. And I can tell you collectively, the effect this is going to have is going to be phenomenal. Check out the links. Start making the effort now. Commit yourself for the next year to getting your name out there, your business out there. And you'll start to see a significant difference. I can guarantee this will be the case. I know because this is all the stuff that I do. Mm -hmm.